you didn't think we were done with banks, did you? All along, we've been saying that there's a reckoning coming that was never really about rate hikes. There were massive imbalances left over from the pandemic era that have to be accounted for. And all it took was some small bank that before yesterday no one had ever heard of to get the ball rolling all over again. But it's not just about this small bank and what it reported. More importantly, the market's reaction to it. We got bonds that are already breaking the historical pattern as I talked about yesterday, and today it is continuing. For example, the 10-year U.S. Treasury is now just a couple basis points off of its December rally low. Is there more going on here than just a single bank reporting some undesirable earnings? That's a good place to start. What is it that actually got this ball rolling? New York Community Bank Corp. Some people might remember that name if they were paying very close attention to the bank crisis last year, or maybe the first part of the bank crisis last year. New York Community Bank Corp. was one of the winners. They got to absorb about 40 branches of Signature Bank. Signature, remember them? They were the middle bank that failed between uh, Silicon Valley Bank on the first side, and then First Republic is the final one. Everybody forgets about Credit Suisse because that's overseas stuff. But New York Community Bank, they absorbed 40 branches, and they got about $38 billion in signature assets. So that rapidly grew the bank, which put them in a different category. Now that they're above the $100 billion asset threshold, they've got to deal with more regulatory scrutiny as well as more balance sheet constraints forced on them by regulations. And that's something that uh, the management is talking about, something that analysts have been talking about with New York Community Bank Corp, but that doesn't really seem to be playing too much of a role here. They want you to think that, okay, this is a reason why the bank is acting aggressively, trying to clean up any of the little nasty spots on its balance sheet that may be absorbed from Signature, but that's not what the market's really reacting about. So what they did was, they created a provision for credit losses of $552 million in the fourth quarter alone. So the final quarter of last year, that compared to just $62 million in the third quarter, a nine-fold increase in provision for credit losses. Again, they're saying, we're cleaning up our balance sheet before we get into the real scrutiny of being a big bank. The actual charge-offs, though, those were $185 million in the fourth quarter compared to just $24 million in Q3. So a huge increase in loan provisions and charge-offs. And man the management said, a CEO, a fellow by the name of Thomas Kanjemi said, while these necessary actions negatively impacted our fourth quarter results, we are confident they better align our larger organization with our new peers and provide a solid foundation going forward. Because in addition to the credit losses, they had to reduce their dividend too, which kind of got people's attention. Now, what they said was the credit losses in particular, it was just two loans, two New York City properties, including a co-op that was, I mean, it's just two loans. And there's really two different ways to, to take that news and take that piece of information. You could look at it like they're trying to get you to look at it as if Okay, it's just two loans. That doesn't sound like too big of a deal. Or you could say, holy crap, two loans made you increase your credit loss provisions by ninefold in the fourth quarter? What are we really talking about here if the credit provisions are this huge from just two loans? What else do you got hidden in your balance sheet? And who else has got these kinds of loans hidden in their balance sheets? That's, I think, what's really happening here is New York Community Bank Corp really opened the door to start looking at what we all know was going to be a problem. We've been talking about commercial real estate for, for forever, seemingly. And eventually, somebody was going to have to do something that shed a little bit of a light on just how bad things are getting. And here we have a bank that may be facing, maybe this is the reason, they're facing regulatory scrutiny and they think, well, we can't kick the can down the road anymore, so we got to do something. And so the first bank that says we don't have any choice to obfuscate what's happening in CRE, they're the ones who then let the cat out of the bag. Maybe, maybe. That's the potential here. As Bloomberg reported yesterday in the wake of NYCB's report, investors have been trying to gauge the potential fallout for U.S. banks that held about $2.7 trillion in commercial real estate loans that we know about late last year. As property values tumble and borrowers desperate for new financing face heightened interest rate. They face a difficult environment, that's to be sure. But there's one thing that we do have going for us that we didn't say in 2008. 
And that is people are much more attuned to crisis, crisis potential and crisis processes. Where in 2008, really 2006 and 2007, when confronted with these types of difficulties, what they did was just get it out of here. Just sell it. Get it off my balance sheet. I don't care what happens. F sell first, ask questions later. And that led to, of course, fire sales, depressed valuations, depressed market prices, depressed market conditions, which meant more fire sales, even worse conditions, and round and round we go. So this time, the banking system, authorities, regulators, having learned at least something from the 2008 crisis, have been going in the opposite direction. They've done the absolute direct opposite of what they did in 2008, which was, let's just do nothing. Instead of getting rid of assets that we know we should get rid of, let's just hold on as long as we possibly can, fingers crossed, and we'll hope that it all just magically gets better. But as we know, that doesn't really work either. So everything has just kind of been stuck, just holding together with duct tape and band-aids, hoping beyond hope that there will be an off-ramp, an easy, nice, gentle off-ramp. The kind of thing that a soft landing in, say, the U.S. economy might afford everyone to use. If we have a soft landing, then maybe we can start gently, very carefully, in very determined fashion, selling off these bad assets a little bit at a time. No rush, no need to spook anyone. But if things, the schedule gets accelerated, the soft landing maybe doesn't happen, then the process gets really really complicated. And I think people know that's the most likely option, thus the market reaction. In addition to this market reaction, the market reacting to what's happening potentially in the banking system and commercial real estate, we've also got monetary issues to talk about too. Collateral. Now we're not going to get to those in this particular video, but the Treasury Department is going to be cutting back on bill issuance, which we know tends to create a collateral shortage. And those collateral shortages tend to come at the worst times, such as March and April of 2023. If you want to know how to spot a collateral shortage, well, Eurodollar University has a report on exactly that. What are the dimensions of the collateral shortage? What really happened in September and October 2022 in Europe? It wasn't really about UK and gilts. As some European officials actually admitted, yeah, we had a global collateral problem really getting bad to end 2022 and how much did that contribute to everything that followed by far the most important aspect of this new york community bank saga is the market reaction now there was a big knee-jerk reaction yesterday so you say okay just one day people are unprepared it was a surprise it was it was far more than anyone expected but what about when cooler heads prevail the next day you sleep on it you wake up the next day and see how things are well, today, yeah, things haven't gotten much better at all. Not for community, New York Community Bank Corp, nor the regional banks, nor obviously the outlook for the overall system with bond yields tumbling yet again. So let's take those one at a time. New York Community Bank Corp stock, I mean, you don't see a whole lot of faith in it here. The management came out and said, yeah, look, we're going to do our best here. This is just cleaning up our balance sheet before we get to the big time, but... Well, go back to New York, New York Community Bank Court stock. Its previous low was $6.40 way back last year in the wake of Silicon Valley Bank on March 14th. Now, that surged with the rest of the banking corp and the disinflationary rebound in the middle of the year. So that by July 31st, NYCB stock was at $13.87. Huge, re huge rebound, huge return there. But then, of course, interest rates started to rise again. People got nervous. Regional banks' stocks suffered. NYCB was no different. And by November 13th, it was down to $9.05. But then we got the interest rate rally, bond rally, rates going down. And everybody think, well, that's the end of our trouble. Regional banks, lower rates, this has got to be good. And so NYCB stock, along with the uh, regional bank index, rallied to 1132 by December 14th in the aftermath of the last FOMC crisis. And even though rates continue to go down from there, NYCB stock, along with the rest of the regional banks, didn't. They sort of took a look at what happened with the FOMC, how Jay Powell came out and said, yeah, we're talking about rate cuts here. And rather than take that positively, as they had been doing before then, Suddenly, it's as if everybody said, whoa, hold up here. What do you mean? The Fed is now talking about rate cuts too? What did they know that maybe the rest of us don't? And so from December 14th, even as rates went lower, 
New York Community Bank Corp stock, as well as the rest of the regional bank index, went basically sideways to lower since that last FOMC meeting. On January 30th, just a couple days ago, NYCB was trading at $10.40. So down from the middle of December quite a bit. And then, of course, the announcement yesterday sent the stock plummeting. It was down, I believe, almost 50% at one point. It closed the day down only 37.67% at 647. So just a couple pennies off its prior low. And then today, the sell-off continues. Before I went and started recording here, last check it was 556, down another 14%. So again, market reaction to specifically New York Community Bank Corp, not a whole lot of constructiveness there. But it's not just NYCB. This has gotten into the rest of the regional banks. If you look at the KBW Regional Bank Index, you recognize a similar pattern as we just saw with NYCB. You got a low, it's not in March last year, but it took all the way until May because First Republic and some of the other concerns of some of the other regional banks in the index. But by May, uh, the KBW and Bank Index hit its low of 77.02. Then, of course, it rallied from there. Even though interest rates were going higher, it was the disinflation rebound. And by early August, the KBW Bank Index and the ETF that goes with it, of course, was up to 103.69. And then interest rates started to rise. You know, we had the August, September, October, September effect sell-off. Uh, rising rates, people are afraid that might spark another problem with banks, which was not really the issue. And then bond rally, rates going lower, bank stocks go higher. The the index got up to 111.65 on December 14th, same as the high from NYCB. That was the aftermath of the FOMC. And people said, holy crap, the Fed's talking about rate cuts. Maybe we should be a little more concerned and not just accept the fact or accept the explanation that lower rates are somehow responsible for everything that's going on in the bank. He said, maybe the commercial real estate problem is actually the major issue here. So by January 29th, the KBW index was basically flat from where it had been in December, middle of December, down a little bit, but not a whole lot. Fell a little bit on January 30th and yesterday down 6.5% to 101.99. And then another 5.4% so far this morning today to 96.53. Not quite at the low from May, but moving in that direction relatively quickly, which again is what our real concern is here. The market reaction, the overall market reaction, which does not show a whole lot of faith, not just in NYCB, the one bank that that kicked the ball off, but in the entire regional bank space. And some of it's gotten into the larger banking system too, though large banks are mostly protected. They fortified their balance sheet decades ago, well, over a decade ago. So it's not really an issue for them. And it's not really an issue about regional banks either. Realizing that this was never really about rate hikes, then you understand where these concerns are coming from. And as we've been saying all along, lower rates are not a good thing. Those are a sign that people are increasingly in demand for safety and liquidity. That you would think there are circumstances in the near term ahead that would lead to other people demanding safety and liquidity because we all realize that safety is in question and so is liquidity. So as I talked about yesterday, the bond market is making a highly unusual move here. It's it's rallying again after a very short period of time since the last rally ended, which means maybe the rally hasn't actually ended at all. We expected after rates plunge that they go, they back up for a little while, maybe a couple months, uh, usually a couple months. Here we are just barely over a month since the bottom of the last rally. We're the 10 years right back to where it was. The two years not far off either. And so the yield curve is right back where it was in December after only a month, which again breaks with the historical pattern, which, which raises the question, what is that bothering the bond market here? And this is also in the face of the FOMC, which yesterday tried to pour cold water all over the idea of rate cuts. In their official statement, they said, in considering any adjustments to target range for the federal funds rate, the committee will carefully assess incoming data, the evolving outlook, and the balance of risks. The committee does not expect it will be appropriate to reduce the target range until it has gained greater confidence that inflation is moving sustainably toward 2%, and the market just doesn't buy this. 
Again, this is not about the Fed's rate cuts. It's about conditions in the economy, conditions in consumer prices, conditions in banking that might force the Fed to do what it does not want to do. Whether it wants to or not today doesn't matter. What the markets are saying is that there are conditions ahead that might be very conducive to owning safe and liquid instruments and, oh, by the way, that would force the Federal Reserve to lower rates in addition to all of that. And so rates have gone down pretty sharply the last couple of days, which indicates this isn't just about New York Community Bank. Maybe there is a there there, commercial real estate. Maybe the problem is starting to snowball. Again, caution here. It's only been a couple of days. This is still in the short run and things could change. But the market reaction, and I mean bonds, not necessarily stocks here, is very serious. It's, it's something that you need to pay attention to because this is the wider marketplace and this is the bond marketplace where fundamentals actually do matter. There is definitely something that has caused bonds to break out of the historical pattern, to defy this massive amounts of treasury supply, to laugh in the face of Jay Powell at his, his ridiculous statement, they're not talking about rate cuts after they were talking about rate cuts and before they weren't talking about rate cuts. It's not about rate cuts at all. The bond market is saying there is something here to be concerned about. And that's what we need to look at. As I mentioned before I started recording, the 10 years at 383, just a couple basis points off of its December lows, two year at 416. Even the short term rates, something you need to pay attention to too. The six month treasury bill at 515. The three month has been holding at 535. You see a more, a more aggressive move lower in the three month rate, especially where it gets below uh, RRP. That would suggest that the market's really getting ready for something feces and fans and all of that stuff. And we see big moves in terms of sulfur and forward rates too. So what are we talking about here? Well, the limited facts that we have, we're talking about a single smallish bank, a New York Community Bank Corp, that may not in the grand scheme of things matter all that much, nor was what they reported some bombshell. It was concerning because as we've been saying, there is something to be concerned about. We all know commercial real estate is going to be a problem. And we're just waiting for that moment when something would light the fuse here. And light the fuse to what? What are we actually talking about in the bigger picture? We're not talking about something like 1929, nor do I think we're really talking about a repeat of 2008. So let's just move those off the table. And we don't need those types of calamities in order to be concerned or the market to be concerned. Because right now, the global economic condition, just from the economy's perspective, is incredibly weak. Yes, I know US GDP, labor data, even recent stuff from the ISM today make it appear as if the US economy is invulnerable. But what the market keeps saying is, well, it looks invulnerable until it isn't. And I know it's easy to think, well, didn't we just go through this last year? We had a couple banks fail and it didn't seem to move, even move the needle. But last year, in many ways, that might have just been the prelude. We didn't get the full effect from what would be a wider, more systemic issue. Again, I'm not saying 1929 or 2008. We don't need that scale to suffer some severe consequences here. A recession, a deflationary recession, a nasty period that continues to look like it's lying in front of us. And here we are again with another set of outcomes, another set of events and developments that move us further in that direction, even if GDP was terrific in the second half in the U.S. last year. It is the reaction across the marketplace, much of which shows very little faith in the ability of a soft landing, if it's happening, to cushion the blow. And you got to think it's, it's also a reaction to the idea that there is no soft landing here. We might be seeing some answers to a question I raised a couple videos ago, how is it that bonds can be so strong in the face of such overwhelming supply? Are we seeing an answer to that? Well, that's the video I did below here asking that question. As always, I thank you for joining me. Huge thank you, your University members and subscribers. And until next time, take care.